Good evening, people. How are you all doing? I apologize for the delay on this next video, but um, a few things going on, and I got my 3D printer, which has nothing to do with radio, but uh, I've been playing with that. Anyway, this is a video on programming the UV28. Um, as you can see here, this is the UV28. Did a video on it uh, about a month or so ago now, so I have been quite delayed in getting back about this one. But, um, yeah. Now, it is pretty much the same as any of the other ones in the range at the minute. Uh, if I turn it on... Welcome. You will see this horrible red menu. Oh dear, I don't know what they're thinking. Anyway, so it has that horrible red menu. Anyway, so let's get out of here. Ah, that one. Okay, so here we go. So programming the UV28 is pretty much the same as all of the other UV ranges I've done recently. So it's the same as the UV29, it's the same as the UV5RH, I don't have one but it's the same as the UV5M and the UV25, that huge beast thing. But I will do it anyway. Uh, now it is supported by Chirp but you need to know which ones to open. So let's uh, fire up Chirp. Now Chirp is the latest version as of today which is uh, May the 14th, 2024. So let's fire it up. Okay, so in here we go to a download from the radio, make sure we've got the the correct COM port set and a bow fang. Right, now I'm just going to plug this in. So it's... Uh, It's rather tight fit this one. There we go. Yep, it's still on. Now back to the computer. Now then, as I say, this is UV28L. So I'll just show you a few things here. So the UV5RM, you can use that to read it. As you can see, it's reading as if it's a UV5RM. Now, that I don't have anything actual programmed into here, so let's just put something in so you can see it is actually working. Uh, that'll do. Oops. Uh, oh, God, what am I doing wrong? Okay, um, let's just queen repeat a book. And we'll just go. I just want to put one in. Hold on a second. Right, let's just leave it at that. 147.32. Let's upload it to the radio. And okay. Okay, it's uploaded to the radio. And let's put it to memory mode. There we go. Nope, oh, slightly out of focus here. There we go. So it's 147.432, which is what we told it to do. So that shows you that that one's working. So let's go out of file. We go to new. Oh, what am I doing? I still need to do that. Radio. Download. So, we select the Baofang again, and this time we go to, where is it? UV17 Pro. And we click yes, click OK, click OK, and as you can see it's reading that. And it's read it, and there it is. Um, and there's one other thing, which uh, oh, some people have highlighted they seem to think some people no disrespect to anybody but some people seem to think that the 
on the forums that the UV17 Pro GPS will work. It doesn't. So let's just click yes. And if I click OK, it looks like it starts but then it errors out. So watch this. Yeah, so 17 Pro GPS does not work. Contrary to certain beliefs. So for this instance, I'm just going to use this UV17 Pro. So let's uh, get this and OK. So it's reading the video. And this is the new one. So I'm going to get rid of these two old ones. No, I don't want to save it. And no, I don't want to save it. Now, the easiest way to do it is to use the Chirps uh, interface with Repeater Book. The other way you would do it is you would go to Repeater Book yourself, like here. And you can maybe type in this information here. So it's 146.94 with an offset of minus 0.6 and a tone up of uh, 136.5 for Mount Seymour. Anybody in the Vancouver area or lower mainland will know, who this, will know this, this transmitter. It is on Mount Seymour, it's south facing and it has a huge footprint. But we're not going to be using this today. We're not manually programming it. We are doing it through chip. So you go to radio and you go to query the source, so as I say, I'm going to use repeater book. It's asking you the area. So we're in Canada. Well, I am anyway. Oops, C A. No, C. Okay, Canada. Uh, we're in British Columbia. I'm not going to give my details. So uh, filter North Vancouver. I know on certain bands, and it is the, I think this is a, yes, this is a tri-band, so I want the 2 meter, the 1.25, and the 70 centimeters. Click OK. I know you want certain modes, because it's not a DMR, it's only an FM radio, so it's not digital. And I want a distance within, what is this, this kilometers. Uh, it's, it's be, let's just, I don't know, give it a wide range, let's go to 50. And OK. So Chirp is now querying repeater book. And it's come up with these answers. I'm sure there's a lot more than just this, but um, there you go. Uh, so you've got all these here from repeater book. And so I want to move these into here. So all you do, select the first one you want. You know, push and hold shift on the keyboard. And you select all the way down to whichever one you want, like that. Or you click on the one that you want, press Control, and then go around and click on the other ones that you want yourself. So things like that. Okay, let's just go with this one. So what I would do now is I would then say right click and I would copy. Move into the original image of the radio, which is here. I click on the number one, right click, paste. It's asking me to want to overwrite the memory. I would say yes. Some memories are incompatible with this radio, unable to support tuning 443. Okay, I'm not too sure why it does that. It does that every now and again, but I'm just going to ignore it, so just click OK. And it's missed this one out here, which is number. F oh, actually, I didn't hit them in order, did I? Anyway, whatever. It doesn't like that one. Um, so there you go. So you have. Let's open this up again. You've got the Mount Seymour one. <laughs> it has to like how it just does Mount Seymour, Mount Seymour, Mount From Seymour. It'd be nice if it actually put. The, oh, there it is. It's over here. It's on the comment, but it actually doesn't show that on the display. So. As it even says there, not stored on radio. Um. So this is, as I say, there's that one I was talking about, V7RPT. So all we do now is you go to radio, upload to radio. As you can see, it's already got all this setting because this is from the original download. That you down, sorry, that you downloaded from the radio. And I click OK. And then OK again. And it writes to the radio. And it's finished. The radio reboots. 
And there you have Mount Seymour on the top there. So let's just have a flick through. You got Mount From, Mount Seymour, Mount From again, Mount Seymour. As you can see, it's just cycling through them. If you look on the side here, you got number one, two. That's just the memory channels. Okay, now another thing is you can see the, the timing on this is rather yeah, that's rather poor the the timer for the screen. So you can change that from here as well. So if you go to uh, where is it? Um oh you go to settings here. You got your basic settings here, the squelch timer, excuse me, <coughs> the timeout. Um, but what we're interested in is this one. Backlight timer is currently set to 5 seconds. We can set it to 20 seconds or we can set it to all. So let's just send it to 20 seconds. Uh, you can turn other things on as well. The auto key lock after a period of time. The Roger beep, which, well, it's up to yourself. Um, how channel A and channel B is displayed. Obviously channel A is the top one and channel B is the bottom one. You can have them display the channel name, frequency, or the channel number. You can do it on both. Save mode, power save mode, save mode. I'm not, mm, not sure what that is. Anyway, um, any with anything else we need to change here? Key lock, sound alarm, menu reset, disable FM. Okay, let's not touch any more of those. What's the work mode? I think this is to do with VFO. Yes, it is. This is what the default VFO channel A and channel B are set to if you switch into VFO. And DTMF. That's just the DTMF tones for signals that you want to put into them. So let's go back to basic settings. And you've got this option here to disable the FM radio. Yeah, I just leave it, usually leave it enabled. So let's uh, let's write that up to the radio. And we go upload. And away we go. As it writes, and then radio reboots, and we should see that the display should stay on for more than five seconds now. There you go, it is. Let's have a listen to see if anybody's around. Uh, Mount Frome, I don't think I can get that one from where I'm located, but. Three, four, three, two, one, two. Uh, Victor Alpha 7, Charlie Oscar India, just doing a radio check. That's good. Sometimes I can't hit that repeater because of the position I am in the house. I really do need to get an external antenna put up. Instead of tucked away in this corner. Um, but yeah, so that's how you program the Baofeng UV28. It's a bit of a, a chunkier beast than the other ones. Um, I do like the design a little bit than the UV, more than the UV29. But um, this is what I do. I get the radios, I test them, I programming, and I'll do a, a power output test on them on it shortly anyway it's been a while so hope you enjoyed it hope it keeps you informed if there are any oh, any questions you guys ask i mean i do try and get to the um the youtube and i try to answer it every now and again or oh, there is a forum i have uh, i've just got a few little people in there but um it's slowly gain, gaining a little bit of chat you can always ask in there um, so please uh, like and subscribe to my videos and um, it'll really help with the channel and it'll help me get more radios in to give you guys a, an opinion what I think and how to program them and you never know if the channel starts to get more popular they may run competitions and various other things like that. Anyway, have a good, um, have a good evening everybody and 7 threes. Good night.